you have room for some good news. I just, uh, I just have just received more input uh, from this ongoing testimony that just, just continues to rock me. And uh, I, love, I love the moments of God. The, the moment God shows up and, and does something amazing, people are having moments in God right up here uh, earlier. But, but I love the follow-up testimony, often even more than the testimony itself. Because it's not just what God did in a moment, but it's the, it's the life that's changed, the family that's changed, that, that God poured himself out and just releasing increase and momentum. Amen? Amen? So this testimony actually starts five years ago, and it starts right here in this room. Um, I'm sure it actually starts uh, before that. But for me, five years ago in April, I was preaching on a Friday night service here, and I came in out of the service I take my seat on the front row, just the service about to start, and I look over, and there's a young lady sitting over here, and she's got a medical mask on, and uh, I don't know what's wrong with her. I've never seen her before. I just see her. She's got this mask on. In that moment, it's like the gift of faith just comes on me, and I, and I wish I could say it's like that all the time, like, yes, that happens at least three times a day. It doesn't. But in this moment, it did. Like, the gift of faith came on me, and I turned to my wife, and I said, I don't know who that lady is, but she's getting healed tonight. Come on, Jesus. And, uh, and so uh, the service goes on, and worship's amazing. Get up, talking about God, and the, the presence of God just comes on her, because, I mean, God's already here tonight. Amen. And the presence of God just comes on her, and she starts shaking and trembling and, and crying, and all the pain leaves her body, and, and, and other, God does more stuff in the room. People get healed, and she comes up at some point to give testimony for what God's doing. She comes up, and she says, this is the first time in five years I haven't had any pain in my body, and my like, God's doing something amazing. And so I go, I go to just lay hands on her and partner with what God's doing, but the Holy Spirit says, don't touch her. So I just tell her, I said, I feel like I'm actually not supposed to touch you. And when I say that, she just falls over anyway. <laughs> she's, uh, she's just trembling under the presence and the power of God. She's on the floor. What I don't know uh, is that she didn't yet know Jesus, but on the floor she gives her heart to Jesus. <laughs> and, why, and why she's wearing the mask, she had been diagnosed, she had stage four colon cancer, and had been given five weeks left to live. So not only does she wake up get, or get up off the floor, uh, a daughter of the king, she also is 100% healed of cancer. Come on, Jesus. I don't, I don't just mean, you know, the symptoms are gone, we think it was healed. I mean, she goes back to where she's from in Florida, and the doctors do new tests, and they tell her, we can't, not only can we not find any trace of cancer in your body, we can't even find trace or tell that you've ever had cancer. <laughs> Completely healed. Come on, Jesus. What God does, he always intends for it to increase. Amen? Amen. And, uh, and here's, here's the back story. It just, it's, it just gets better and better. The back story is that she was, I believe she was 36 that uh, that April, five years ago, when she came here, uh, she had been estranged from her parents, specifically her father, for years. I think about 19 years. They hadn't spoken. There, you're, you're here. You're here tonight. Thank you. That's their parents right there. So, come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. God is awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Wow. If we had planned it earlier, I should have had you up here telling it. But you can, if I get any of the details wrong, you can, you can help me out. <laughs> but basically, you, they've been estranged for years and years. Um, she, the, the long story short is that she had cancer. The doctors had only given her a few weeks left to live, like five weeks or so left to live, close to that. And uh, in that season, she had called her parents, her, 
her father, she felt like, she didn't yet know the Lord, but she felt like she just needed to reconnect with her dad. So she calls her dad, it's right there, reconnects with her dad. Then the doctors tell her, hey, you have five weeks left to live. There's nothing left we can do for you. We, you just need to, if you have a bucket list, do everything you can to fulfill your bucket list with the time you have left. Now her parents, having known that she was sick, even though they had been estranged, started looking up, if I got this right, started Googling cancer miracles on the internet, and Prophet Google spoke, and um, <laughs> Bethel Church comes up, you know, somebody, in fact, somebody was telling you about this, and, 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 then, and then I think your wife said, we don't even have a computer to look, those, to look that stuff up, and then a computer showed up in the mail, and then you, and then, so your wife called your friend to say, thank you for sending us the computer. And she said, I didn't send you a computer. I just got chills. <laughs> and, uh, so they're looking up cancer miracles. Bethel Church comes up. They see cancer miracles, testimonies, all that stuff. And so when Dawn says, look, they've told me I only have so many weeks left to live to fulfill my bucket list. She says, will you help me fulfill my bucket list? <laughs> Her father, in the wisdom of God, says, on one condition, if you'll come to this church in Redding, California with us. Now, she's not a believer yet, because we'll help you if you come to church with us. And she's like, I don't want to do that. It's like, well, that's, that's what we want to do. So she's like, okay, fine, I'll go to church with you one weekend, and then you know, do the whole bucket list thing. So they end up here, and that's the Friday night. She's got the medical mask on, and God touches her. She gets up off on the stage, completely healed of cancer. Doctors, the doctors do tests. They do, three te they do three series of tests, and then they call her, and they say, you need to come back in because they messed up three times in a row. <laughs> Some, the, the machine's broken. The technician's messed up something. We need to do it a fourth, fifth, sixth time because we can't figure out why you have no, no cancer in your body. But look, what God does, he likes to do completely, amen? And, uh, and now, yeah, I don't, I don't understand all these, these numbers, but um, her immune system before she came here, a normal immune system is something between seven and eight. Is that right? And hers was 2.9, 2.6. And, uh, and so she came here, her immune system was that low. She gets up off the floor healed. She goes back, normal, seven to eight. When she goes back, they test her immune system as a 9.1. <laughs> now, now, through this process, they start finding out about, about miracles, about Heidi Baker, Randy Clark, and they just are ingesting everything revival-oriented they can get their, get their hands on. And she, I believe four months after coming here, she moves to Mozambique to work with Heidi Baker. <laughs> 